playing a video game so much that you've played it to death. We've all done it, and heck, some of us take it a step further to grave robbing. Not letting our games rest in peace, it's time for another round of Smash. Something being finished once it's dead was always a really annoying concept anyways. I don't plan to stop living when I'm dead either. How, you might ask? Well, I've been practicing. Just watch old reruns of reality TV. If you can survive that, you can survive death. Plus, without staying alive after I die, how am I supposed to have the time I need to play every video game ever made? Although, that would mean I'd need to play through stuff like Truth or Lies and that Razor Scooter game. Yeah, I suppose dying would be okay. What I find most interesting about playing a video game to death is that it can be looked at as either a good thing or a bad thing, depending on the context. Though, I'd say more often it's a good thing. Typically, you're not going to be playing a game over and over unless you enjoy it, seeing as video games are an optional activity. The school system really needs to get that fixed, though. Could we get rid of math for it? Nah, that's barking up the wrong tree. What if we just sandwiched it into art? I mean, tell me Picasso wouldn't have been impressed by the pixel art of Metal Slug. But for many of us, as kids, the days of playing games to death would often happen when school wasn't in session. That's right, the good old days of summer. Every video game playing kid's best friend. For those of you who may have forgotten such a thing exists, kids were often given something called ample free time to do what they enjoy. And among the things that kids enjoy, video games are right up there. I personally loved Super Soaker battles myself as well. Trying to find any takers of that as an adult hasn't quite worked out though. But during those long summer days as a kid, you could really get a lot of game time in. Even as part of a balanced life full of outside activity, summer reading, or whatever else you might be doing. And since kids typically don't own as many games as adults, especially back in the 80s and 90s, there would inevitably be games that we played to death. You ever revisit a really difficult game as an adult and think, how on earth did I beat this as a kid? By playing it to death, that's how. It's all you did. I mean, just think about what your priorities were like as a kid. Eat candy, remember to wipe your butt, and beat Super Mario Brothers, am I right? As an adult, your daily life likely places a heavier burden on you, to the point that beating an old video game just may not be as important, or perhaps not as easy to prioritize. You ever tell your boss you'll be coming in late because you're in the middle of a breakthrough on stage 6-2 of Ninja Gaiden? Also, I just gotta say it, the determination of kids can be borderline incomprehensible sometimes. I was with someone whose kid pouted for three straight hours because he wanted to go to Toys R Us so badly. Sorry, Mom. And looking back at it now, I'm glad she held her ground. It made me a man. It also made me appreciate what I had. Instead of wanting more, I played what I already had more. Although I never did actually beat most of my games until I was an adult, I was so bad at games as a kid that even playing them to death wasn't enough. Felt like I went to school to death and that didn't breed excellence either. That said, when it came to playing games to death as a kid, it didn't just happen when we were by ourselves, oh no. By far, one of the biggest ways it would happen was with multiplayer games. Games designed to be played to death. Specifically, with friends in the same room. As much fun as you might think you can have playing games online these days, and the convenience certainly goes a long way, most people will tell you that playing in the same room is the way to go. Chugging soda, pounding down bagel bites, and screaming your head off as you rallied to play three straight hours of Super Smash Brothers with your friends until your dad took a break from doing yard work to pop into the room and tell you to get your darn butts outside and enjoy the beautiful day, only to wander to a nearby park or something with all your friends 
and just talk about the games you'd been playing, still laughing and soaking in the good times. Sure was nice. What makes multiplayer games such prime candidates for being played to death is how much the experience varies each time. And sure, maybe not when it was that one friend making a mockery of you in Goldeneye with Odd Job over and over, but in general, each multiplayer session is going to differ, especially if you can get up to four players, since it increases the variables, and even more so with certain games like Smash Brothers that invite chaos. Anyone ever do a match with nothing but Pokeballs and a high drop rate? All right, but enough of romanticizing our childhoods. I mean, get over it, right? Let's talk about enjoying life as an adult, which often comes by trying to replicate our childhoods. What I've found is that the games we play to death as adults are often games that fall into a comfort zone for us. It could be nostalgia, but not necessarily. Many of the games that I play to death now, I didn't own as a kid. But even if you discover a game as an adult, it can become really comfortable to play, almost like a safe zone. My copy of Rocket Knight lets me talk about my deepest fears. But if you have a game that you know you're always going to enjoy if you play it, the more likely you are to play it to death, and the more familiar it becomes. Sort of an endless cycle in a way. It makes sense to me. If the point of playing video games is to enjoy yourself, it's going to be really tempting to pop in a game that you are guaranteed to have a good time with. There's nothing worse than looking forward to a chunk of free time, actually getting to play a game for a while, and then just having a miserable time. Except for maybe stepping on a Lego, that's worse. And sure, we want to try new stuff and have different experiences, but sometimes the gamble just may not be something we're willing to take. What I find too is that because so many adults have so many games, they get overwhelmed and just think, I don't know what to choose, I'll just pop in Super Mario World again. Naturally, how long a game is certainly factors in as well. Certain games that are long enough can feel like you've played them to death after just a single playthrough. That's how I felt with Elden Ring. The way I know I like a long game is if I actually finish it to the very end. That game was tough too, and speaking of tough games, these are often prime candidates for games that are going to rack up a lot of playtime since you can't just breeze through them. You'll need to spend some time figuring out how to get past each stage, getting better at the game as you go, which can take some practice, and heck, some games are hard enough that you could have spent your entire childhood, teenage years, and adulthood playing it to death and still not have beaten it. Maybe you'll beat Battletoads once you're retired. But for those difficult games we have beaten, it's sort of like a badge of honor that maybe nobody in your home cares about, but you sure do. Maybe you can wrangle some folks online into caring about it. Does anybody here care that I beat Ghouls and Ghosts on Genesis? It'd really mean a lot if you could even just pretend. All right, but what about feeling guilty for playing a game to death? You know, assuming there's a million other games or real world responsibilities calling your name. Well, if there was any piece of advice that I could give to all of you in the context of this video, it would be to not feel guilty. There are no style points when it comes to this hobby, at least. There shouldn't be. The goal is to simply maximize your enjoyment. If playing certain games a ton makes that happen, then keep playing them. You can always mix your other games in on the side, or, you know, just sell them or get rid of them, give them to someone, ignore them, stick them in a drawer and forget you have them until years later, whatever works for you. The games you've played to death are likely some of your favorite games of all time. These are special games, so don't hold back. And that goes for anything you love, although might have to wait on this green one here. I'm suddenly feeling very angry. I know just who to talk to about this. Sometimes I'll hear somebody talking about playing one of their favorite games, like they're breaking some sort of rule. They'll say something like, 
one night I just decided to heck with it. I'm playing through Link to the Past again, and it was awesome. To heck with what? All you did was decide to play a game you enjoy. By the way, that really is one game that I can always get excited to play through again and again. The way it starts up just always pulls me in. But anyways, there you have it for my thoughts on video games that we play to death. Would love to hear which games you play to death, and like a lot of the questions I ask, I'd be curious to see how many of you end up picking some of the same games. I feel like that happens a lot. So, with that, comment with your games down below, along with anything else you might like to say, and I will see you in the next video. He's the Red Trooper, yeah! And he's talking, talking about video games. He's 